All righty. John? What's up? You going to start us with a song? Yeah. secular music and bars and, and things yeah. like this. So. Man, what a cool thing. TV and it touches people, you know. It's like to see somebody affected, you know, maybe even brought to tears or... Because I know for me, like, a song sometimes would, like, touch me so much that it, I would, you know, it would be... God's way of bringing me to the altar. You know, I, I know worship, you know, you shouldn't, um, you know, that's, it's not all about the, the music and how good the music sounds and, and how good the guitar player, or singer, or keyboard player is, but if that song can pull on your strings and get you to the altar, that's, that's where it is for me. I mean, if I can do that, then I'm, I like to think that, you know, 
what I play. If I'm putting my heart and soul into to a pursuing what God's given me to do, I have no doubt that I'm going to use that to reach people. Hmm. Oh, what a cool thing. Has, has there been a moment for you where like, you've heard someone play a song or worship that you kind of fell into that? You're like, oh my gosh, this led me to... Absolutely. And it was... I would say more so hearing a song like like the first time I heard one thing by Hillsong. Yeah, yeah. And, um, just the 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 it's usually the words that get me. The music will kind of create the mood, but. When you listen to the words, and sometimes, it's like this song in particular, it just broke me down. It was like, it was me crying for help, and being done with my whole life, and, and needing a new way. And once I found that way, I, I'm not going back. You know? and yeah. So there's been there's been times on stage where I, and it really, it's a good thing when it's a bad thing that happens, because you, like, you don't, really want to break down while you're singing something, yeah. you know, but, man, when it hits you, it hits you. Yeah, those moments happen to you yeah. also. Yeah. Whoa. For sure. When I'm singing, I'll, and you can always, I'll, I'll try to sing through it, and I'm starting to, like, choke up, and it's like, ah. Oh. Yeah. But, yeah, it happens, for sure. And, and it's enjoyable, actually, like, before, I was like, God wants me to be a worship leader. You know? I got to be and it's not like that. You know, I, I get just as much enjoyment and feel like I'm a part of a bigger thing when I'm just playing the guitar, you know, because that's, that's part of it. And I believe that as long as I stay in God's will and I'm pursuing what He wants me, there's there's going to be doors that open. There's going to be doors that close, and I just got to be. I have to be with, okay with whatever God has, you know. And yeah. Where I I would fight that before, and I, I the Team Challenge went through a lot of testing with that. Yeah. The this funny thing about Team Challenge is like I I told when we see why it's a year. Yeah. You know because you He takes you through through your weak points and exposes them and you for me I found it very like I mean there was no two ways about it. He, I was put in situations that I failed at constantly in life mm -hmm. and and then those that was pointed out and I could work on it. And it's whenever I learned that lesson like, okay, well, I get it. That circumstance would, would leave. It would, it would go away, and a new oh. trial would come, you know. And but I had to get it. And sometimes I drag that on for a long time. You know, and it's like, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of pride that I didn't know I had, you know. And um, I think it stems from my childhood. You know, I would, when I was young being bullied a lot and being kind of a, a loner that didn't really want to be a loner yeah. but I didn't trust people enough to you know jump in on things you know nobody even knew I played music until I was in the bar at 21 yeah. and I played since I was seven years old oh my gosh but I was so afraid to, to let it out but I tell you what what's because that was my vice was acceptance. It was like when I went to the bar and I was never throughout school, childhood, I I didn't have that. I didn't have popularity. I, I wanted to belong but I didn't know how to belong. And when I went to my first jam night and I played music and people liked it and clapped. I, I, you can imagine what that did to me. Like, I was like this is it. Yeah. You know? And and that yeah, that was it. And I abandoned I became a very 
a very selfish person. Well, so you watch this gift you were given take you down the road, like that should have been used for good or something, mm -hmm. like yeah. you used it selfishly, you're saying. Yeah, very much. But I had no, yeah. I didn't realize it. Right. You know, I just... Uh, looking back. Yeah, looking back, it was like, I can see exactly the pattern. I can see what I did, the reason behind it. And it doesn't make up for the years that I took from my children, but, it, mm. you know, you, you, all you can do is move forward. And you can't, you can't go back and you can't stand still, so, yeah. Yo, you talked about God working in your life over that year span, and like, uh, what's it like to have him teach you in this time? Like, he does teach you by circumstance. And like, why do you think we were open to seeing how that worked and like... Because I think maybe it's tempting to think that stuff's like man-made or something. Mm -hmm. But like, what's it like to know that God is the one teaching you? It's refreshing, I think. I think it, it gave me a lot of... Um, I still wanted to fight it, you know, yeah. of course. But to fight through it, but I... I knew... I knew what was going on and I knew that it was it was comforting to me because I I wanted I was searching so hard for a way but I was so wrapped up in alcohol that it, it was uh, I was blind to a lot of things and you know when I went to Teen Challenge you can't really hide much yeah you, you know everything you, it, either you if you're if you're set in your mind that you're going to complete and you're going to stay, no matter what the cause, God's going to work in your life. Yeah. You know, and you just got to be got to be open to it. You know, you, you can you can close the door. You know that I mean that's the one thing about God is. You know, I, as powerful as he is, and he could do anything he wanted to do, he gives us choice. He gives us the, the ability to choose what we're going to do. And he won't take that away from us. We have free will. Yeah. You know? And I see why. It's like, it's, I kind of I tell my kids, it's like, you know, would you want somebody to be forced to love you or make the choice to love you. Right. And and it's pretty sad. and even and you can't force it. It's, yeah. it's you know it's sure. But you can you can I make try. you can make people you know you think you are and you can make people or try to, you know, do do what you want to do, but if you want it to be real it has to be a choice by that person. You know? And I think that that God, you know, we've used that and said He wants us to choose Him, not be made to to it. He could make us all forced one if He wanted to yeah. very easily, but He wants people to choose to love Him. And, and I think that you know we're I always like wanted to put God in my box, you know my. You got, he's got to be on my intelligence yeah. level, you know, which is ridiculous. I mean, you know, but you have to go through things. You have to experience circumstance, and and I, I think that's why we go through so many trials. You know, it's, we're becoming more like Christ until the day we die, and you know. And along with that, I think that we should be striving every day to reach people because that, to my understanding, is the only reason we're left on this earth after we're saved. I mean, he could just like, okay, you're saved, come on up. Let's go. But he <laughs> has a mission for us, and it's to get other people saved. And What's it like not walking in that mission? Like before, because you, you have been a part of church. But you still struggle with alcohol. Well, yeah, I, I, 
you try to get drunk on Saturday and go worship on Sunday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're a worship leader, right? Yeah. So what's it like being stuck in kind of that thing? Like, where you, I'm sure you want it to stop, right? Oh, and that's, you know, once I got into, um, it was around 2014, I started going to church on a regular basis and, and worshiping. And um, it was like, slowly, I was going through this process of like, wanting to because at that point I had actually stopped going to the bars. Yeah. I was just drinking on my own. To survive. And, yeah. And uh, I think it was twenty fifteen I one night, you know, I had this thing where once in a while I would go to the bar and it was always a bad thing. Yeah. And and then to see that's the way it works. It's like you you end up chasing this feeling and you never find it and you just drink more and more and more and more go to the bar more and more days and you never fight it again. Yeah. And you think that, oh, I'm going to go to the bar and it's been a few years. And I ended up in the hospital. Um, almost died from alcohol poisoning. And I remember that that nurse that came in and the next one I woke up the next day telling me that if you can make it through eight days, you know, you'd be good to go. And I, it was in the days, man. I, I went through withdrawals, not kidding me, for three months straight, where I was constantly going to the doctor for my heart. I constantly feeling like I was having a heart attack. And, or, you know, it was one thing or the other. And I think that that really let me see what that was yeah. going to be like. And then I ended up meeting Ashley and... Your um, wife? Yeah. And you know, when we when we first started dating, I was um, done with alcohol. By the time we got married, I I had started again, and it slowly picked up until you know I, I got my last DUI, came to challenge. But it's just that was you need you remember you were intake director actually when. When I came, and I remember calling you. It was about I was just a couple weeks out from from coming up, and as as much as I knew I had to go, I was I was fighting. And the reason I was because I remember calling you and making up an excuse that I wasn't coming, yeah. and, and you told me if I didn't come when I was supposed to, I wasn't going to. And I, I think I called you like an hour later and said, I'm coming up. But my fear, you know, what was keeping me was the, the fear of withdrawals, what yeah. it was going to be like. And I prayed to God, I asked God, I, I will stay out and complete this program, just please don't let me feel the effects of that withdrawal. Let me go through that. And dude, I came up here, I drank the night before I came. Yeah. And scared to death the whole way, and I made it through that first night. It's a terrifying. Through the second night, and nothing. I didn't. I it, and people would say, "Oh, well, you weren't a real alcoholic." I I would challenge you to talk to anyone that knew me. Yeah. And they would tell you that I was uh, I was one of the worst, and I didn't go through any of those. I think you Oh, not nothing. Nothing. You believe that was a gift from God, Absolutely. like divine? Absolutely. And you know, even now, you know, I, I have no, I believe I was completely healed from, out, from, from alcohol, period. I, you know, I don't think about it anymore. It doesn't cross my mind. I don't have to go to meetings. I, I, you know, you'd hear this thing, because what I used to have been a court order once. Yeah. And do it here, or you got to keep coming back, keep doing the program. You, you know, you, you got to keep coming to meetings. And once a month, alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Dude, if you got to do yes. this, you don't need meetings. You don't, you're not always an alcoholic. You know, my body, I should have so much damage to my body from alcohol, and there's none. I go hiking, I, I summited the biggest mountain in the 
Appalachians, you know, at 43 years old. I'm in better shape now than I have been since probably I got out of the military. Yeah. You served in the military? I did. It was short-lived. I broke my knee, but, you know, it is what it is. I do want to say something about AA. I know it's helped a lot of people in NA, and I've been through my share of meetings and stuff. But the one thing I don't understand is before the class or whatever even starts, you proclaim this disease over you. You're like, hey, I'm uh, that's, that's drug it. addict. That's it. You, you, if, you, uh, if you believe you are, you probably, you're going to be um, But you know what it does do? It does bring light to the fact of what we do as a Christian, and we proclaim something different. Yeah. You know, like we proclaim, I'm healed from this. Right, right. I'm saved. And like, if you have two groups of people, one saying they're healed and saved, and one saying they're sick, I would just assume the people who say they're healed are gonna. I mean, it's by God's power, and I don't think that you could just say something and be better. I think no. God does that. But, but I think if you're truly, if you, if it's heartfelt, and you know, I was at the point. My my one of my prayers um, a few months before my DUI, or it was about a month before my DUI, I was sitting there completely drunk in my living room after Ash and the kids had went to bed, and I just broke down, and I, I asked God, please, my, I remember it specifically, please change me, or just take me out of this world, yeah. just take my life, I don't want to live anymore, and from that point forward, I saw the doors start opening for my for what would end up being healing from alcoholism and, and it took you know his way it was it was a hard way a hard yeah. lesson I got a DUI and you know but everything just fit you know like we had at our church we had went a year with no pastor we had an interim pastor and we had interviewed this guy and he came in and his first sermon was kind of his audition. And it was his testimony for T. John. Yeah. And it, oh. So and it was powerful. And it stuck with me. And and you know, we just kinda went forward. I ended up getting a DUI and actually was because I, I remember my thoughts sitting in the police car. The first chance I did, I got a run. Yeah. Oh, really? That, that was that was my what should have been my fifth, and I was going to go to prison. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember that. And then when I got my sense about me, you know, Ashley came and picked me up from I think it was the highway patrol station, and said, "Will you please talk to John and talk to each other?" And he said, "Yes." And when I went to talk to him. You know, I didn't have any expectations or anything. I just went in to hear about it. And God started working on me right in that room. I was, I was just like, I started seeing, like, as he was talking to me about it, like, visions of me being happy and smiling and, and being free. Oh, and, dude, if you know me or knew me before, I did not smile. Yeah. You couldn't pay me to smile. I, even if I was happy, I wasn't smiling. Really? It just didn't happen. I was a very hard person. And I broke down and started crying. I was like, I'm going, you know, I'm, I want to do this. So basically, really the only barrier that was there from that point forward was the fear of withdrawals. Yeah. And once I found that courage to come up here. I mean, it's just, I haven't heard since. Do you know that when I think about God changing someone's life, I think about you, and I think about how I saw you almost soften, like in front of my own eyes, you know? Mm -hmm. And I watched you, like you did worship at Teen Challenge too, but I think I watched you like find your voice, like God allowed you to find yourself yeah. again, and. It was just a cool thing to like. Actually, be you know, a part of. it's you say find it, and but I never had. It. Mm. I knew what I was capable of doing, but dude, I just team challenge was just something special. 
Yeah, you know, it was. I just started building things out, not caring. It, the The concern over what men think of me just began to fade away. Yeah. And and now I don't. I don't care. Yeah. And I'm going to sing. I'm going to play my guitar if you like it. Cool. I hope it touches somebody, but it's not about what, what my acceptance from others, it's about God's acceptance of me. Ooh. And I learned that up there. Yeah. I, and you know, I was one of those people that's like, kind of like, give me a sign. Because you know, I would like, it, it would be really easy to like get lifted up and then just as easy to get smack, let myself get smacked right back yeah. down by the devil, you know. So I was constantly on the shoulder coaster. And once I, towards the end, I, I started riding straight, you know, but it was like, I had to learn a lot of painful lessons up there about myself. And it, it was, it was rough. Since your story's been out and since guys maybe from your church have heard the things that you went through, has anyone reached out to you and said, hey man, I've been struggling with the same thing too. And hearing what you've gone through, maybe it's been helpful or... No, I haven't had... No, I... There, there is... Where I work, there's some pretty hard... I mean, if you're in the trade, I mean, you're, you know, in the welding or working in a steel mill, you're going to be around some rough characters. Yeah. You know? And I wear... Most people walk around on eggshells around these guys. I'm like, you know, you don't scare me. You know? <laughs> and it's like, you, they start asking, you know, and I'm at that point right now where, you know, they know, like, don't ask me to work over on Sunday because mm. I'm going to church. Yeah. And it works out for me because I work nights. So I would work Saturday evening, get off Sunday morning, go home, get shot real quick, and then go to church. And so it works. Seven days is like, I, I don't think I could do it if I was working on days or like a second shift type thing. There, There is people that that I think God's opening the door for them to work in their life. But I think for the most part, it's been my kids, especially my two older boys that, that it, that's been the real focus, and I think for God, and, and with Jack too. I mean, he's he's still at an impressionable age, and I'm, you know, and it's, there's actually been about six months. I just talked to him the other day. In about six months, where Lucas wouldn't talk to me at all, yeah. because see, when before T Challenge. I was, I was always in their life, but it, with my boys especially, it was more like, like a buddy, like a friend. You know, I didn't know how to be a dad. Yeah. And when I got done with Team Challenge, it's like, I want to be that father, and and I, I had to, I wanted him home, so like he came back from my mom's and started living with us, and all of a sudden, and I got a kind of look at it from his perspective, it would be hard, you know. All of a sudden I'm all about rules and yeah. and don't do this, don't do that. I'm trying to talk to him and direct him on the right because he, he's going down, uh, or was I should say, going down a similar path as I was, just a, a different substance. And six months ago it, it reached a boiling point he didn't want to respect my rules, and and I was about to come to blows, and I asked him to leave. He's you know, 19 years old, and and I just I didn't. That's the way it ended, and he uh, his. We had to put our dog down. Our, the big pit bull was starting to get all crazy <laughs> and he was showing signs of aggression and and I, I put him down and he held that against me and I didn't get to go to his graduation or anything and it, it was but I, I, I just I knew I needed to just let him work out 
whatever feelings and, and let him know that the door was, was always open if he ever wanted to talk. And, and he just contacted me a few days ago. And, and so it's a hard one. And that's something that I don't quite yet know how to, um, to deal with. Because, you know, it's like I could easily come across as a hypocrite because of my, my past. Yeah. They, you know, it's like it, when, when you get out of Teen Challenge, it's like, and I, I knew it in the back of my mind that it, I, I don't expect to come home and everybody just trust you. It's not going to work like that. Right. You know, and it, and it wasn't like that. I had to earn it. And I have the best relationship with my mom that I've ever had. My daughter that's getting married. I, I'm with Jack. I get him all the time. And, trying to work with him. So things are like but there's there's trials and yeah, you know, Lucas is is one of them and I just believe that God's gonna see all that work itself out. And it's like that's the thing you have to remind yourself is God he knows how the story ends. He he knows where it's all going, but you still have to live it out. You have to work through it and try to make good decisions along the way. Mm -hmm. Do you believe God changed your life? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you think you handle things differently now? Oh. Having God in your life. Yeah, before, I mean, of course, with the trial, I mean, you just turn to the bottle, you know. And if it's too much, you just blow up. You know, I don't, I think I have, I still have my personality. I don't think that, he made you who you are, you know, and I'm, you know, I can come across like a, like a hard guy, I guess, you know, it's, that's something that I continue to work on. Is but, there, oh, sorry, no, it's, um, is there, sure. is there a verse uh, or something that you like to lean on or like? You know, it's, yeah, it's, um, be angry, be angry and sin not. And that really, that's, if you, if for me, if I just, because I, I, I still get, you know, yeah. angry. Yeah. And as long as I, I know that anger is not in itself sinful. It's what you do with it, oh. you know? and so I just need to. And I, you know, actually, I paid a pretty, a pretty hard lesson for that six months ago when it almost came to to close with me and him. He was upstairs in his room, and I said, "Okay, you need to leave." And he said something as I was walking away, and I turned back to yell something back to him and slipped on the step, and I, our steps are hardwood, there ain't no carpet in there. Yeah. And I slammed down on my rear on that step, and actually severed the, the fat layer. Oh my gosh. Right there. If, if I would've broke the skin, if I would've bled out, I had to go to the hospital and everything, and there's still a dent there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was like, as soon as it happened, as soon as it happened, I'm like, I had that coming. Yeah. I knew it. I had that coming because I like, I had to get that last word in. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if I hadn't turned around to do that, then. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me think about power and how like God being like the one who could judge came down and made himself a servant, you know, and it's like, when people, sometimes, yeah, like, I want to get the last word in, because it feels like, well, I won this conversation, or something, or like this argument, but I feel like God, he wants us humble, you know, yeah. and to, if that involves letting someone else have the last word, like, yeah, but I've, I've learned so much. And for, you know, to go along with, you know, to humble yourself and be humble. Yeah. And I got oh, yeah. real quick. And 
you know, it's a hard lesson. And, but, you know, I've made a career out of learning hard lessons in those so it's like, you know, if I was to, it was a little bit of like encouraging the people that, that, that have maybe been in Team Challenge and they are struggling and, and you still see the same, you know, it gets better. You can't, you're still going to have trials. Your old self, we, we have two natures to us. And that old nature, once in a while, wants to rear its ugly head at you. But it's being able to, to remember a verse that, especially for me, that, you know, don't act on your anger. It's just a simple biblical reminder. Don't act on it. Yeah. Get, if you get upset, you can't. A lot of times you can't help that. But you do have a choice in what you do. And I would just say keep keep God in the picture and just keep going back to him and keep seeking him. It's progressive. It's not like, you know, yeah, there's immediate salvation and immediate sanctification, but it's also progressive. And you're not going to be done until you did anything you die. Yeah, and he's always going to be working on you. And that's how that's how we're worked on is trials. And there's nothing you have there's I, w I would say being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus is not easy. Yeah. No. But you have peace. You you have peace. And to me, pe having peace and knowing where, where I'm going to end up and knowing the result is a lot more important than having an easy life. You know, when you say peace, what do you mean? Peace knowing, I think, just the knowledge of salvation. Oh. Just, you know, the... the I think in a way of... Peace that you belong, you know you're a child of God, you know, like before, I, I wanted the world to identify me, I wanted approval from from people and now it's like I know what I am in in God. I know I know who I am and that's peace to me. Because I, I was always searching for my identity and I don't need to anymore. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Because, yeah, in a way, like, our subconscious almost, like, it recognizes that peace, or that knowledge of salvation, you said. You were a crew leader, right? Uh, you were in the kitchen for a while. One of my questions is, what, what is it like to lead men? And on the other side, like, has that helped you lead your family? I would say that leading, I never, I, I had a supervisor job one time and I thought, you know, when I, when I applied for it and I got the job that, oh, this is it, you know, this is what life's all about, you know, and I soon learned that it's not always cracked up to me yeah. because you have to, you have to deal with each individual differently because you have multiple personalities and it got to the point where I was just tired of hearing people complain. Yeah. You know, I didn't want it no more, you know, and, and I always said that I would never be a supervisor in the workplace again. I'm, I'm content just being a worker, you know. Mm. But that Teen Challenge, it was, it's neat to see people You know, like, especially when your guys struggle with something and you can kind of guide them and, and you see them kind of evolve and go through the process, you know. And I've always had like a, a mind for organization and like being able to put things together and, and things. So the kitchen to me, that was fun. Yeah. You know, and just being able to make the decision on 
of course he had like I think it was Brian Lowers was the he was the guy that was over me most of the time and he'd give you your menu and everything and but you know I got to make my own dish and it got it got its own name and everything yeah but and I'd make some massive cornbread servings <laughs> but uh, yeah it was and it's also when you, when you see somebody else like Nate you remember Nate yeah was an amazing cook and he came in and he had these ideas and, and just seeing like okay Nate let's see what you what you got you know you do this yeah you, I want to see you be having the power to let somebody else block experience that yeah oh you know, okay and, yeah and like being able to say yes to somebody, having that authority to say, yeah, do this, you know, mm. it's rewarding to see their happiness be that, you know, yes, I get to, you know, I forget what he, what did he mean, I forget what you call it, it's like some egg, oh, yeah. some kind of egg pie, what, what? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name, but it was so good. Like a baked egg? Yeah. It's got a name. Yeah, I know. Keisha's? Keisha. Dude, it looks so amazing. Mm. And is it tempting to want to, from a guy who likes organization and like how things go, is it tempting to take control over every situation there and like, mm. I want you to do, you know? And then to lose your mind if it doesn't happen the right way. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't notice that so much in the kitchen. I think the biggest problem I had in the kitchen was when, to, I don't know if I can mention names or not, but it was uh, Anthony and, and Derek. Yeah, yeah. They were, they just were at it all the time, you know, and I was always in the middle of it. And finally, I'm just like, you know, go to the office. I can't take this anymore. Yeah. And, but that was, really, that was it in the kitchen. But, and keeping control over Mitch. Yeah. And Mitch liked to create whatever he wanted to in there. But, um, I just talked to Mitchell today. Did he? Yeah. Is he doing good? He's doing good. He's going to be a nurse. He's really? He's going to school right now and just bought all the books, so he's excited. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But I noticed that more. He was tough to handle, it's just. <laughs> when I was, when, because I remember um, there was a time, how it panned out was like, the time came, my six months came, where I was going to be allowed to, to do worship. And the first chance that, it, they, that was given to me, I completely blew it. I, they let me go up there and I played, uh, I think I played three songs, something like that. And I was doing a song I probably wouldn't normally do. And I knew I was messing up some. And I looked in the back and I saw couple guys in the sound booth and they were looking at me and laughing and looking at each other and automatically in my head they were laughing at me. Mm. Now there was no two ways about it so it affected me and it then I, their plan. I went to the pastors and I'm like you know and and they made the right decision. Pastor Dave and Pastor Bill was like well we're going to take you did you have worship for us? So I went through it. It was probably three more months of no plan, waiting for Pastor Bill to tell me I could. And then he came to me and said, Okay, I'm going to let you start worship again. But there's a stipulation to it. I got a bunch of guys that want to do worship too. And I'm like, Oh boy. And on my mind, I'm like, Who? So it was a bunch of guys that dropped slips that wanted to be a part of worship. So it was, he ended up with Skirkas, um, Todd, Kanan, and Preston. And, and I knew in my mind was like how hard it was to form a band, even when you had a bunch of time. Yeah. But he gave us well, one practice day a week. And you know we you know we played like Tuesday through I mean we, even on Saturdays we do the worship night and so it was really only Monday we weren't playing and I had to like so I I got all these songs together identical books 
and numbers for each song and come up with a system to where they could, like, I could give them a little piece of paper that had the numbers on them and they know right where to turn. But, you know, I learned a lot in that, where it was really frustrating at first, you know, and, and especially like with Kane, um, not no fault of his, but I use a capo a lot, so I change, I'm keeping the same shape, but I'm changing keys a lot. That's tough to follow on bass. Yeah. You know, and I remember Kay was like, well, we'll just keep with the bass. I'm like, no, we're not keeping with the bass. <laughs> and he said, but Kanan actually took it upon himself to, like, figure that out. If I'm capable, where's, where's this note going to be? Where's, you know, he would so do So you saw rise to the case. Yes, and he did. He did an extraordinary job. I don't know if I could have done that, you know. And then just, like, Getting the band to where we could play these songs and and sound halfway decent was my objective, and I it, you could not. I've never seen it happen, and I know God had to see it happen because we came together and we did. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was probably the best worship experience I've ever had in my life was with those guys Whoa. on the stage. And we had limited, I mean, extremely limited resources. He didn't have any technology. I had uh, an old acoustic guitar, I had a little effects pedal. There was nothing extravagant about it, and it was amazing. Absolutely. So you feel like God had his hand Absolutely. in Absolutely. He, I mean, we just meshed. We all meshed. And I would start playing, start just pick up on the drums, and then the bass would come in, and I was like, this cannot be happening. It shouldn't be this easy. Yeah. You know? And yeah, I, I would never forget that. And just seeing like how the guys responded to it. You know, you, you had the altar full, you know. Yeah. And it was just like... What's that like, seeing grown men and women just men, but that's who we saw, but like, genuinely on their knees or like worshiping, going all out. What's that like as a, from the stage view? That's definitely one of the rewards. I mean, I guess even a secular musician, you know, when the crowd responds, that's, you know, that's your, you know you're doing a good job, but with seeing, it's different when you see somebody come to the altar, or you, see, you glance over and you see somebody in tears. Yeah. It's a, it's just a feeling of joy. You know you have a part in this person, whether they're coming to Christ or, or confessing a sin or whatever it is, their heart was touched mm. through God used you to do that. Oh. And, and it's like, there's no better feeling. Yeah. There really isn't. And following God is such a personal thing. And then I was trying to think today of like, how can you even describe hearing something from someone and that feeling of like, God meant that for me. And like, they would never really know, you know, you can tell them. But, and then you have those, that's why I love doing this because you have something like God can use you to tell someone something. And it almost like builds this picture of who God is, yeah. like in a very personal way. For sure. Yeah. And speaking on that, like there was times God would just show up exactly when I needed him to show up. Yeah. And I remember a specific time I was, I went up to the altar and I was fighting going up there. And I got down on my hands and knees. And I just wanted God to let me know he was there. It was like I just felt I was in one of those times where I smacked myself down and I just, I needed to know. And right when I prayed, Jason Robbins came up and touched me on the shoulder and said, God wanted me to come tell you that he loves you and he's proud of you. What? And that will always stick with me because I remember thinking like, okay, I know God loves me. He's proud of me, really. Like, how can you be proud of, how could God be proud of me unless he knows how the story ends? And you can ask that, oh, ask that question. I mean, you see it, you literally, because God is, he's omniscient. And 
he he knows the future, he knows the past, he, he everywhere. And if he can say he's proud of you, well, that's and then you know that took me to actually Romans eight. What a light ball moment for me right now. Oh dude, it was when that happened I would never forget that. That is my assurance. Yeah. And it's like and I, I took me to Romans. That's how we yes. can be proud, you know. It's a it's a, and, and this is another. You know, this was given to me by Levon. Yeah. I needed a study Bible, and he, he gave me a study Bible. Yes, I can. And if I hadn't had the the explanation, I probably wouldn't have clicked with me. But I started reading on predestination. And like, I'll just read it, Romans 8, 20, as, and we know that all things work together for good to those who look God, for those who are called according to His purpose, for who He foreknew, He also predestined, to be conformed to the image of the Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He predestined, He also called. Who He called, He also justified, and whom He justified, He also glorified. So, what is the one thing that all those words have in common? Mm, maybe he... Past tense. Oh. Anytime you have ED at the end, it's past tense. So... Predestined, called, justified, and especially glorified are in that sense. This is because God, from His eternal perspective, sees this process as having been completed already. From God's perspective, we have already been glorified because He sees us righteous because of the work of Jesus on the cross. But, in the march of time, we have to go the under process, uh, undergo the process of being conformed to the image of God. So, we're, we just have to go through the process. We have to walk it out. God knows how it is. Yeah. And if he if he calls us glorified and justified and that's already happened. We just gotta walk it up. So it was like all that stemmed from him saying he's proud of me. Like yeah. how can how can because I know my past, yeah. I know the things I've done, how can God say he's proud of me? Unless he knows how the story ends. And I learn this and I I come to a I, you know salvation and and he uses me for for good things. Those things must be gonna happen. Yeah. If he can say he's proud of me because I, I know he's probably not too proud of the decisions I've made in the past. Yeah, based on everything we know, right. I wouldn't be proud of me, you know. Yeah, yeah I I in my past, I've been very, I can even really give you something that I've done that was good. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's something here and there. I was nice to somebody, you know, whatever. In you know, but <laughs> it was all done in vain. You know, it was without God. Yeah. So that really taught me how to, how to look forward things instead of looking back because one of my biggest downfalls in teen child what would drag me down every time was a worthless feeling remembering the bad things that I've done and thinking how could how could anybody love me you know and I would just get in this pit and there was countless times where people had to help drag me out of that the pastors or and he ended up going to to Bethel, I think. Travis. Travis. Yeah. Travis. He would. He was amazing. He would just talk to me and remind me of these things. And, you know, they had so much patience right, for me. I, I I must have drove them nuts. <laughs> I really did. But Travis impacted my life too. Yeah, he was, just the whole program. Just had, it was life saving. Yeah. It was life changing, life altering. You know, it's. You know what I think it is? It's people who. We fly.